Attention pro athletes. Want to secure your financial legacy and thrive off the field? Oak Bridge Wealth Management, led by wealth manager Chris Anasetti, is your dedicated financial planning ally. But don't take it from me. Take it from the Dallas Cowboys, Tyler Biotish. He says, Chris set goals financially and has been incredibly impactful in my journey in the NFL. Experience our customized, comprehensive approach, trusted by top NFL players. Don't leave your financial success to chance. Connect with Chris on Instagram at OakbridgeWM underscore Anaceti. That's OakbridgeWM underscore A-N-I-C-E-T-E. And let Oakbridge Wealth Management guide you across the goal line. One. Welcome back to the Believe in Badgers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network, presented by BetOnline.ag and Oak Bridge Wealth Management. Once again, I'm Matt Perkins, joined as always by Badger legend, the Hebrew Hammer himself, Matt Bernstein. Bernie, how you doing today? No, I'm freezing. Oh, I'm back. <laughs> I'm good, man. Jared, you see that, baby? I like it's it. The last man. time you'll see a fullback's arms. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna jump on the phone. From, I think this is. Well, I stay uh, away from guys like you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's no more guys like us, man. Us and Brady Ewing. All right. It's over for us, man. The fullback uh, the generation is no gone. more. But this is about you, dude. Hey, this is you about you. You guys had you. a good run. You guys had a good run. <laughs> no more. Not, yeah, we had to. Not as good a run as as you've had. Well, I was yeah. gonna say we we have to pour it out for the fullbacks, not for the wide receivers, though. This is about to be the era of wide receivers, one I'm sure that our guest today would have loved to have played, and Jared Aberderis, Badgers All-American, uh, and one of the great uh, wide receivers in the history of the program. So thank you so much for joining us here today. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. Before we get into it, I want to remind you guys that we are presented by betonline.ag, where they continue to be your number one source for all of your online sports wagering needs. You name it, they've got it over there at Bet Online. Football season is here. Uh, it is time to get all your last minute futures bets in over at betonline.ag, college, NFL, you name it, it's there. Uh, so head on over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit with our promo code Believe. That's B L E A V. Bet online where the game starts. While Bernie plays with his headphones and tries to get a better internet connection for the second pot in a row, Bernie, I don't know what is going on with your. Uh, I don't know what is going on with your internet these days, dude, but that is, you know, neither here nor there. Yo, this for the so time funny. Being. Yeah, well, uh, I'm going to hop into it with Jared because um, it was actually funny. I was talking to with my buddy, uh, John McNamara yesterday, and he was just up in Watoma this past weekend, uh, which I know, Jared, is your hometown. So I will ask the question that Bernie always asks. Let's start back at the beginning. Tell us a little bit about little Jared. Man, I was always an energetic kid. Um, running around, loved every type of sport. Grew up with two older sisters, so they kind of picked on me and probably helped uh, make my jukes and whatnot. Uh, my agility up, up a couple uh, notches on the, uh, the ESPN ticker and whatnot. But, um, but yeah, just love sports. Did all of them growing up. <clears throat> and Watoma was an awesome little town. We had a, a bunch of good, uh, good buddies that you know really grew together um, in each and every sport and had goals and helped each other achieve them. So I feel like that's the trick with small towns. Um, sometimes you get, you know, somebody with a good experience, somebody has a bad experience, but it's all about like the people that's around you and, you know, blessed to have that, you know, really good, you know, group of guys that grew up together and, and pushed each other. So yeah, it, honestly, it was, it was awesome growing up there. And um, Watoma really, you know, stuck at sports until really our class came through um, I mean, I, they were talking about, you know, getting rid of the football program, all that. And we started up Pop Warner. I think our, our class was like one of the first ones. Um, and so, yeah, it was pretty cool to, to be the first team to win state. I think it was like our first playoff win. I think we, our team had like the first playoff win. That's how bad um, we were in the past. But, oh, um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. So going off of that, was football your first love? in a sport or did you start somewhere else? 
Yeah, football is always the main, uh, my main sport. I mean, but I did wrestling, did basketball, did track, baseball, soccer. I mean, I did them all. And then in high school, you had to decide. So um, I chose track because I figured it'd make me faster for football. And then I was honestly si- signed up for basketball. And the day before the season, I switched to wrestling. So uh, my dad was an all-state wrestler, um, really good. And so that kind of, um, uh, I guess, pushed me that way. But I just felt like the... The mentality side, I mean, I don't know if you guys know any wrestlers, but it's all about mentality. And, um, you know, I think that's bode well for me. I mean, to get where you got to be in the NFL and whatnot, you got to be pretty mentally tough. And it's all about you. And that's, you know, wrestling kind of teaches you that. It's, you can't really blame anybody else. It's all about, you know, you and and the work you want to put in. So Yeah, my, uh, my roommate at UW was on the wrestling team. So I got a, I got a, I got a front row seat to a lot of that. And yeah, it's crazy. They're, they, they're nuts. I went to a high school that did not have wrestling. So it was a a shock, not just hanging out with Dan, who is a little bit different than most of the wrestlers, but like hanging out with wrestlers in general was an eye-opening experience, I'll say, and leave it at that. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they don't eat. Bernie, you done playing with marbles over there? Can you guys hear me and see me? Yeah, we can hear you and see you finally. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know what's up. My computer just somehow doesn't love this, uh, doesn't love our technology. Doesn't love anything. It's not you, Matt Perkins. I promise. It's okay. Just put the marbles away, right? You can yeah. play with the- <laughs> Did you crack me up? This guy's like one of my favorite people to play golf with because he just makes you laugh the entire time. By the way, Jared, the coolest thing I've ever seen, one of them on Instagram, Matt Perkins, didn't they put it up um, a wide receiver? Like who are the, who are the best wide receivers or have the most records? And there's only two people out of five slides. And it was you and Lee Evans. I just yeah, thought that it was just you. It was like five pictures, three of him, maybe, or two of him and three of you. It was so cool. I, I don't know how I made it up there, but I'll take it. Well, you have like five records. No. <laughs> Only what, I three, mean, four? I don't know. I think I got like two, maybe. I think I got career receptions and season receptions. I don't know what else I did. Maybe tie for yard. I don't know. I don't know. You have a lot of them. <laughs> you got a lot of them. Listen, I, I just think it's so cool, man. That's all I'm saying is, you know, you're or you're a humble dude, but like what you were able to accomplish at Wisconsin, especially. So I want to go back because I'm getting ahead of myself, but that was one of the coolest things I've seen because I'm like, wow, imagine if it was just like me and Lee Evans. Like it's just like, uh, yeah. it just seems like it's just so like bananas amazing um, yeah. to be on, to be on the beach, man. To be to be mentioned in the same um, you know sentence as him is is definitely an honor. Well, same. You can. I'll, I'll forward you the. Uh, I'll try to find it. Um, <laughs> you can keep it. Dude. I might put it up as a poster. I got to get you to sign it. There. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, wait. So, Jared, go back. Like, you you guys won the state championships. You're 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 crushing it in track. What gets you to Wisconsin? Like, what what excites you about that? And who else is like part of the the on the board? So, yeah, I was um, – for me, I always wanted to compete at the highest level in college. And so, for me, actually track was going to get me there. Um, I had a small scholarship to Minnesota, um, the Gophers for track. And then the uh, Badgers offered me a walk-on. I was going to be a decathlete. Um, I was I had helped both state records in the hurdles. So, I was a really good hurdler. And then, obviously, it was fast enough. That, you know, there's 100, 200, all that kind of stuff. Um triple jump, all that, you know, everything. But so I was going to be the Catholic at, in college and, you know, like the scholarship was just smaller. And it was like, when I went to Minnesota, I like, you know, I like, it was a nice, you know, campus, whatever, but it was so spread out. I loved how Madison was, I guess I go back to the one nice thing about Minnesota is I felt like I'd be a little bit further away from home mm-hmm. where I could get home if I needed to. But um, then when I went down to Madison on that visit, um, I loved how everything was so centrally located around the, the campus um, and obviously be able to play for the Badgers growing up in Wisconsin. Um, and I was still felt like I was far enough away where it was like an hour and a half from my, my family. So I was like, well, if I really need something, they'd still come down, but they're not going to bug me every, you know, every day to go grab lunch or something. So, um, you know, that was my only real concern, <laughs> um, but, but yes, yeah, so I was going to Madison for track. I figured I'd walk on there. I'm like, well, obviously like the, the money wise, it really wasn't that big of a difference being a walk on. I'm like, I can earn, earn a scholarship in track. Um, you know, if I prove myself and then really that summer before the season started for football, um, I just talked to coach Bielema and I sent him my film. I'm like, Hey, can I come in here for track? And I walk on for football. 
Um, and I was going to do both. Um, but I didn't really realize the, I guess, the time commitment that football was. I mean, I figured it was like high school, you know, hey, do a two hour practice, go home, chill. Um, so it's kind of a rude awakening in that sense. But then once I got there, I was like, well, you know, you have all fall, you got all spring. And I'm like, well, I can't really do track. I mean, I don't really want to be a nobody in both sports. I'd rather try to be a somebody in, in one of them. And so um, football was always my love. I loved like the team aspect of it. I mean, I really liked track because it was, you know, it was fun. It was you, you got to go train and, you know, it was easy. Practice was easy. Obviously, like you're, you know, you get winded and stuff, but it's not like anything like football. Um, but I love the the team aspect of, of football. And so decided to stick with that. Um, and yeah, that's how I got down to Madison. Wait, so you're a senior in high school and you're, you sent Coach B your film and said, hey, can I walk on? Yeah. That's was actually awesome. It was actually after my, I mean, I already graduated high school. It was, it was literally probably like, I don't know, a month or two before the football season started. So, so they must've yeah. known who you were being an in-state athlete. I don't, I have no idea. I mean, I don't, whatever they knew once I sent the film, I guess. I don't know. Wow. And so, wait, so wait, Oh, Matt Perkins, I can't hear you. I was, cause I was a quarterback. So I, I, you know, I ran a lot. You know, I threw the ball, but it's not like I had, like, a good arm. I just throw it up to a couple of good athletes, and it's D4 <laughs> football in Wisconsin. So you hope that they would just make a play on the ball. You know, if, I, if it was an interception or whatever, I'll just go tackle them, I guess. But um, so, you know, I, I ran the ball a ton, you know, options and whatnot. We still threw a lot, but it's not like I was a receiver. So I wouldn't have been, like, a quarterback at the next level. It would have been some other position, and that's when we switched to – receiver so you did that right as uh right when you came in you switched to receiver so you're playing a receiver on scout team as a freshman yeah so what was your scout team experience um well i did, i would do scout team quarterback too every once in a while like we played wofford my freshman that red shirt, red shirt year um so i did like the scout team because they did a bunch of like option you know read options this and that and so i do that um that was pretty fun. I mean, because you just, I mean, read the defensive end. So it was JJ Watt, you know, a couple of times, <laughs> read it, got him in trouble a couple of times, you know, because I'd juke him out and, you know, you know, little me just running around like crazy. I was fun, but it was, um, you know, you're not playing. So it's not, I mean, it's, you know, it's not really what you signed up to do, but there was fun days, but it's, you know, it was more like, hey, I want to play in a game, you know, but part of the experience. Redshirting is grueling. I mean, it it's great in in a bunch of different ways, and it's terrible in a bunch of different. I mean, you're you're on the team, but you're literally nobody, All right? And I think it'd be different too if you were like a scholarship guy. It's like I was, you know, I was at the bottom of the totem pole. Like, who's this guy? So it's not like it was all, all that cool. I mean, I feel like if at least you're like a you know a guy that they want to recruit, like you don't have to like show them i mean you still have to earn it but it's like they kind of are like hey we got this guy we're grooming but I'll, you know i'll walk on like hey this guy <laughs> go run this route you know well, and, and not a preferred walk on too so so right. I, mean, I don't even know what that i don't even know what that means honestly i mean i feel like because people say oh you preferred walk on i mean that's just whatever you're still a walk on it's not like you have, it's not like you have tryouts like we don't have those you know so i feel like every walk on is just the same I feel like they, they, they tag that to like the five or six guys they want to be at camp. Right. Oh yeah. But I mean, I was at camp, but I don't, I feel like all it. well, I guess there was some guys that maybe weren't at camp. So, but whatever, I don't, I, I guess. So there's I one know. latch lower. It's literally, you show up the first day of school. I felt bad for those kids. Dude, that'd be terrible. Like they had no, I literally was like, man, these kids have no chance. Cause I, cause you show up, we're already three weeks. Most of the times you played a game. And these right. kids are trying yeah, to catch they, up. They didn't work out, or they haven't been yeah. working out like we have. I just Don't felt bad. Playbook, like, good luck. They're like, here's some shoulder pads and a helmet. You're playing college football now. Right. <laughs> Wait. So go. So go back. Like, what? First off, um, being a being a, a walk on. Did that mean a lot to you before you came to Wisconsin? No, I mean, I, I didn't. I didn't really know much about it to be honest. I just knew I was paying for my school. <laughs> <laughs> well, because no. the. There's, there's, it's everyone's a, a hero, a folklore hero. At if you walk on and and do what you did, I mean, there's, there's a wall for for guys like you in the stadium, and it's so cool. I mean, the 
the thought of just walking on, building, you know, your brand, building your skills, and then playing in the NFL, man, that that's special at Wisconsin. So did that did that come off? Like did that, did it ever like did you ever take a break and be like, man, I'm a walk on who did this, who accomplished this? Um, I mean, I think obviously now, like looking back, like it's really cool, um, pretty cool to have that. I guess in my past, um, but you know, when you're doing stuff, even like in the NFL, it's like when you get drafted, this and that, like you don't like it, you can't sit back and be like, oh, this was awesome because it you start doing that, and it's it's basically you're done, you know. So I feel I always felt like in my career, I couldn't really enjoy it or like look look at some of the accomplishments and be like oh it's pretty cool but now obviously like when you're done like yeah you, you sit back and it's like it's a pretty cool experience to be able to accomplish what you did because it's obviously the hardest you know obviously the hardest route to get to number one into college football and then you know earn your playing time and all that but then also to get to the next level too so um you know it, it, you do kind of look back and it's like wow that's pretty cool Dude, you're a uh, side note. You're one of the most beloved Wisconsin dudes I've ever seen. You walk into a room and everyone's like, there he is. I love that guy. No, they're, they're usually like, who's this guy? <laughs> is this guy a fan or what? <laughs> Until they figure out who I am. Then they're like, oh, you're Jerry. So I hear you there. It's, it definitely is pretty cool to be in the state and um, be able to obviously play, you know, grow up in the state, play for the Badgers, and then. Being with the Packers have that opportunity is pretty cool. But honestly, you walk in a room and most people don't really recognize you. I feel like well, you you get that as a football player. Like it's not like you, they see your face all the time, you know. So unless if they're like a super fan, they just think you're a normal guy. Unless if you're six eight, you know, three hundred pounds. But I'm just a little guy, so they <laughs> like everybody else. They're like, Who, you here to see Jared? You know, like, oh, that's me. You got to wear your jersey everywhere. Yeah, they'll, they'll just think I'm a bigger fan. Yeah, like, hey, that you know. also true. Uh, wait, so go go back to that grind because because uh, I remember you know once you're you're not playing, you're out there on practice field again, beat up by dudes like JJ Watt. What's that grind like to say, hey, I want to actually play, I want to do it. What and so and how did you approach that, dude? It sucked. I honestly felt like um, a guy that really was pivotal in my career was John Budmeyer. So he was a quarterback with us. Um, the year that Russell came and he was actually him and Russell were kind of competing and obviously we all know how that went. Um, Russell went on to be a stud um, and John ended up hurting his arm that year um, and never really recovered from that. But so going into, I say I'll have to go back to after my freshman year, I'm like, well, this sucks. I don't like this. Like football, football this, a, <laughs> this a, you know, a dummy out here. It's not like I – and I, I struggled that first year because I was a quarterback for so long. Like I used to play receiver as a little kid. And I honestly, like I, I dreamt that I'd be a receiver for the Packers. Um, that was kind of like one of my dreams as a little kid. But then going back to high school, my freshman year, our, our quarterback broke his thumb in practice and we didn't have a backup. And I was a receiver at that point. Well – Coach was like, well, who wants to be quarterback? And we had a game in like two days. But and we didn't like know he broke his thumb. So we thought it'd be, you know, he was just gonna be back for tomorrow. Somebody just had to finish practice. So I was like, nobody would be quarterback. So I'm like, whatever, I'll be quarterback. I didn't even know that it's like a snap count, because I'm like, you know, a receiver, you don't listen to that. You just kind of sit there and watch the ball. So I'm out there like, blue 42, just messing around. <laughs> Get to school the next day, and they're like, hey, you gotta play quarterback. <laughs> Brandon broke his thumb. So that's how I got into quarterback. Well then fast forward all these years, like I get to college and it's like, I haven't really caught a ball. And I mean, you catch obviously every once in a while, but not like a receiver, like running routes, getting tackled. <clears throat> so like, I remember one practice, I dropped like seven passes in a row with the Badgers. And I was like, man, this sucks. Like, And I think a lot of it too is mentality. Like you're just like a new guy, you're nervous, this and that, but still it's not like I was refined in my profession yet. And so that winter I was like, well, you know, that's when I had to decide, like, do I want to, do track. I'm like, there's no way I'm doing two sports because this is ridiculous. You know, the amount of time commitment. I'm like, I would never be able to do that. And I was like, I, I'll, I, maybe I'll just switch to track. Um, cause I, you know, I was a pretty good track athlete. Um, but actually John Budmeyer was like, you know, and I worked out with him a lot, <clears throat> you know, he needed somebody to throw to, I'd be that guy that'd be, Hey, I'll stay and throw with you. Or in the winter, we would get a lot of extra work. And he's like, dude, just, just stay through spring ball. Just, you know, just, just stick it out. Try to do string ball because he's like you did. You, know, you had a really good winter with me throwing blah blah blah, and so I did. And, and that spring ball, I got a lot of good opportunities and actually made somewhat of a name for myself and gave myself that position in the next year to be in the two deep. So, um, you know, really came back to you know really that winter with Budmeyer um, working out, 
really grind it with him. And then he just kind of gave me a lot of confidence um, going into that spring. Well, Bud Meyer is not the only quarterback you caught passes from. You caught passes from a lot yeah. of quarterbacks. Quite a few. At quite a few. Um, Scott Tolzien, Russell, yep. Russell Wilson, Kurt Phillips, Danny O'Brien, Joel Stave. Did you feel like you had like a special, unique connection with any of those guys that was above and beyond the rest? Or like who out of those guys do you feel like you gelled with best on the, on the field? I mean, all, honestly, all of them. I mean, I feel like, you know, everybody on that team – was really good, got together, you know, got, I don't know, we, we all got along really well, I should say. Um, I think, obviously, like, Russell was pretty cool, like, him coming in and just building that relationship really quick. And that was really my first year of being the starter. So, like, my my first year was Scott Tolzien. Um, I was a redshirt freshman. And I started, I think I started, like, two or three games. I think Nick Toon was out one game and this and that. But, you know, I had a couple catches. I think I probably had like 20 catches, a couple touchdowns as a, you know, redshirt freshman walk-on. So that's pretty cool. Um, but Scott was awesome. He was a really good quarterback, um, you know, really built into me. You know, I remember one practice, you know, I had to like dive backwards for a catch. It was behind me. Um, and Coach B just, you know, out of nowhere just, just started reaming me out. Like, if you want to play, you got to catch every, you know, ball. And it was like, it wasn't a really a catchable ball. I mean, but. I was, you know, I just took it. I'm like, yep, yep, for sure. I, you know, gotcha. But I told you, I remember Tozzi coming, you know, up to me after that. He's like, hey, dude, that's, you know, that's kind of BS. Like, you're doing great. Just keep it up. So as a young guy, that like one of your quarterbacks say that's pretty cool. Um, then obviously Russell had him, and that's when I was a starter, you know, alongside Nick. Um, and we, we kind of balled out that year. Had a really good offense. Um, so it was really cool to kind of have that connection. But then, I mean, the rest of the guys, I mean, like you said, Joel Stave, um, you know, got, you know, really close with him, you know, Kurt Phillips, another guy that was awesome. Um, those are the two main ones that I kind of had back and forth, you know, sometimes it, when we get injured or whatnot, but, um, you know, all the guys were awesome. Um, you know, enjoyed experience with all of them. What's it like to be on the other side of Al Toon, not Al Toon, Nick Toon, sorry, having a father like that who came in, who was a wide receiver, played for the Jets. Like what's that experience like? Yeah, I mean, it was um, – I think Nick had – obviously, like, he had the, the pedigree and, um, you know, the, the ability, and I think he had the mentality too. So it was really cool as a young player to kind of lean on him a little bit. Um, you know, he was the guy, and so being able to kind of – like, hey, like I didn't have to be the guy that, that first year, which was kind of nice. Um, but he had a lot of experience, and obviously his dad playing in the NFL and having a lot of success – um, you know, it was cool to kind of be able to lean on both of those those individuals. Um, he was a great teammate. Got got along with him really well that year. And, um, you know, every time you see him, you know, in Badger get-togethers and whatnot, it's it's pretty cool to catch up. So who were some of the other guys that you were spending most of your time with outside of, you know, outside of the stadium, outside of the locker room? Um, me and uh, Ethan Armstrong, he was a linebacker. Uh, we lived together. Um, and, uh, cause we went to like a, a Bible study together and got to know him pretty well. He was another walk on actually too, that earned a scholarship. Um, but I, I actually got married in college. So I got married my, be my senior year, but junior year of playing. So we had two seasons together. Um, so obviously like, you know, I was living with my wife and, you know, it still got to, you know, be around the guys, but, um, you know, I wasn't like rooming with anybody at that point, but. Uh, Pedersen, Jacob Pedersen was a big one. Um, we had a lot of main interests in, you know, hunting, doing the outdoors type stuff. Um, so really close with him. Brady Ewing was another guy, um, did a lot of stuff with, and he was a couple of years older than me, two years older, but, um, you know, really looked to him, you know, as a, as a big brother, um, in the sense of could go to him with anything. We did athletes in action together, um, another Bible study type thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, there was a couple of different guys that he got together with, but those are kind of the main ones. But then obviously, like, I guess one I can't leave out, Jeff Duckworth. Um, he, was a, he was a receiver in my class. And so, um, you know, Jeff's an awesome, awesome guy. Had some big plays for us. Yeah, one of the most famous catches in Badger history. Yeah. Against Michigan State. Well, that season, that Russell Wilson season, that, that same season as the Duckworth catch, 
that Rose Bowl game, I, I was there in person. Bernie, were you? I think you were at that game, right? Yeah, so you were at that game, which was insane. Like, that, 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 that entire game against Oregon was, was out of this world. In that game, though, you set the single game all-purpose yards record, even in, despite being a loss. What was your... What do you remember about that about that particular game? I know it's like could be a sore subject because you know yeah. for a lot of reasons. But what what do you remember about that that particular Rose Bowl? I mean, you went to three in a row. Yeah, I mean, you go to three and not win one. Obviously, it sucks. I mean, I, you know, they were all really um, good games, and they were down to the wire. And that really, as a, as a player, that's what you ask for. I mean, I'll, you know, it's fun to blow a team out like we did in the Big Ten Championship against Nebraska, um, but. You know, as a player, like you want those close games, like it's the energy, the everything that's in it. I mean, that's what you live for. And, um, you know, it, it sucks that we could, you know, come down with a win and, and either any of those three, um, but to be competitive and have a game where it comes down to really like the last, you know, play basically is, you know, it, it's fun and it sucks not coming up with the dub, obviously. But um, I didn't even know I had the record, honestly, until I was in the league. Um, I, I learned about it when, um, the running back from uh, Stanford beat it, uh, McCaffrey. So I was watching a Rose Bowl game, and he had, I don't even know how many yards, but they're like, you know, oh, beat the record from Jared Everdale. I'm like, I didn't know I had that record. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I had the record basically because we, you know, had like eight kickoff returns because they just score, <laughs> you know, on multiple possessions. So um, probably not the best way to get the record. Um but yeah, well, their helmets in that game were blinding too. Like yeah. I don't even know how you like those, those, those debut of those chrome helmets. And it, it, was, it was fun. That game, that game was a lot of fun. I mean, they had an early touchdown catch. Obviously, at the end, it sucked having um, the fumble on the side that just like sat there. Like, are you kidding me? Like, just go out a little bit. Um, this fluke stuff. I feel like fluke stuff. Fluke stuff happened throughout our, you know, really my time there. I mean. Um, even at the end of that game there when Russell went to spike it and they, you know, kind of made up the new rule, like you can't have two seconds or less or whatever it was. Um, and we had something like that with Stave against, what was that, Arizona State. You know, it's like just all these things that are just crazy that happen. That's like, well, I mean, that's football. It happens. Um, but, no, that that game, I mean, even that – so that catch at the end of the game, you know, I remember as Coach Chris, one of my favorite coaches, um, Coach Chris phoned down and he's like, you know, hey, ask Jared what route he wants. And I gave him, I'm like, hey, I want a, like a, like a, a post corner route. Um, you know, because he, and that's what I loved about Chris. He would always, he like believes in his players. And he'd be like, hey, you know, I, he would obviously call a full game, but pivotal a moment like that where he needed to get down and get a score. And he's, you know, just calls down, hey, what, what route does he want? And that's, you know, you're going to, if you say like you want a route, you're going to make it work. You know, you're going to take ownership in that. So post corner, burn my guy, get wide open. You know, whatever, whatever, probably 20, 30 yard gain. And ball on the left, you know, left hand, left sideline. I think perfect. Hey, if it goes out, it goes out. Just trying to get extra yards and just doesn't go out. It's just, you know, it's just unbelievable. Um, but that game, I mean, just the back and forth was pretty cool. I mean, even for us to be able to come back after that, still have a chance. You know, Nick made a big catch, come down, spike, and then not get the chance to at least one more play it was just, you know, yeah, it just sucked. But, yeah, I mean, you you did win the Big Ten three times. Yeah, it was just crazy. I mean, it's pretty, pretty cool. awesome. I would say even that, like you know, having those the the inaugural uh, Big Ten championship games was pretty cool. I mean, that was you know obviously going through a change before it was just hey whoever won you know regular season won it, but to have that that you know be the first to experience that and then do it twice you know two two years in a row. Um, that Big Ten championship game was pretty pretty cool. I mean, that's because like, you're playing to get to that Rose Bowl, which is another level too. So um, those big the, uh, that was a lot of fun. Those Big Ten championship games. So, I mean, obviously the first one was a rematch against Michigan State, and then the second one to you know just the way that we whacked you know, Nebraska, took them behind the woodshed, and <laughs> <laughs> threw them a little bit. You know, it was pretty fun. Was it as a fan? It was great to watch. <laughs> it was. I mean, dude, we could. I feel like anything we did was going to work. You know, that was just one of those games where it's like, just just call a play and it's going to the house. It was just incredible. Uh, so Russell Wilson is this like bigger than life human being. What's it like previous to getting him to come to Wisconsin? Like, what's it like in the locker room? What are you guys talking about? And then what's it like when he shows up? 
Yeah, so like I said, we had, um, you know, it was really like John Budmeyer. Um, I feel like Kurt was coming like Kurt coming off an injury or something because I coming off an ACL. Yes, yeah, so I don't. I, I just feel like he wasn't in the discussion at that point. And I don't think, yeah, he must have not have even. I feel like he didn't even compete that year. Um, but you know, so going into the season, it was you know kind of like me and Nick were the kind of projected to be the starters. I mean, obviously Nick had it cemented in, and I had to kind of earn my spot. Um, from the previous years, just build on that. But, um, you know, it wasn't, wasn't really sure how, obviously, a young quarterback, John, would have been a red shirt. Uh, he would have been a red shirt sophomore that year. Um, so, you know, a lot of unknowns on, hey, how, how's it going to look? But um, heard about, obviously, Russell coming over. And Nick was actually the first one to work out with him. I don't know where I was. I think it was home or something like that. Um, but he texted me after the, you know, workout when Russell flew on that night or whatever it was. He's like, dude, he's, he's, he's the real deal. He's like, you know, he basically just said, watch, I guess he said, you know, watch this through a football from like the 50 or something and hit the, you know, field goal. Um, <laughs> oh, so, you know, and like I said, that's how my, that's what might be mixed up, but that's what they kind of told me. So, um, you know, I was pretty excited to get to work with him when we, you know, were able to start that summer. Um, but pretty, a lot of excitement once you got him in the building, um, you know, the type of guy he was, like you could tell he'd fit really well with the team. I mean, you know, Matt, it, it's kind of, you know, at Wisconsin, there's a certain type of people that, you know, fit the building, um, just the work ethic, the humble, you know, people. Obviously, you got to have that quiet confidence. And, you know, there's always a guy here or there that can bring a little bit more exuber- exuberance to the to the, to the the team. But he was just a good fit at the quarterback position. And obviously, he had the talent to, to back it up. So, Attention, athletes. Do you want a frictionless and tailored financial planning experience to secure your future? Well, look no further. Introducing Oak Bridge Wealth Management, the premier financial planning firm for professional athletes. Led by wealth manager Chris Anasetti, our team provides a unique and comprehensive approach, ensuring your financial success both on and off the field. We understand the unique challenges you face as a professional athlete, from managing cash flow habits to planning major business purchases and navigating complex contracts. That's why we've developed a proven process, working closely with our strategic partners to provide seamless solutions for your unique financial journey. Our services evolve with your career, offering short, mid, and long-term goal setting, portfolio optimization, real estate investments, and more. As you transition to life beyond the field, we support you with career development and philanthropic ventures. But don't just take our word for it. Top NFL players like Chase Roulier, Tyler Biotish, Alec Ingold, and more trust Oak Bridge Wealth Management to guide them towards financial success. Troy Dye of the Minnesota Vikings says, I really love the work that Chris and the rest of the Oak Bridge group do. I especially like the honesty and transparency when it comes to setting up financial goals and plans that best fit my needs and situation. It's time to elevate your financial game plan. Connect with Chris on Instagram at OakbridgeWM underscore Anacete. That's OakbridgeWM underscore A-N-I-C-E-T-E. And join the winning team. I want to go back to some of those coaching. You mentioned Coach Chris earlier being someone who was really important to your development. In your, you know, you played under different offensive coordinators, it seems, pretty much every year whether it was Matt Canada or coach Chris or um, once Gary Anderson uh, came in. um, And what was, I I guess, uh, you know, what was sort of the different styles and how hard was it for you to adapt to playing under new coordinators every year? Um, You know, I think it's the toughest thing is just like you get into a good rhythm and then you got to start all over. And like when learning the playbooks, honestly, the worst thing there is <laughs> and you can obviously like take plays and you know but it's just it's still it just takes time and repetition to like like it's nice once you you know like you're there for a year like you got everything under the you know what you're doing you don't have to like stay up and study the plays now obviously you can like study yourself and where you want to get better but new OC now okay now I got to relearn the playbooks so and now it's like taken away from time I could be looking at other players or myself or what I want to improve on so it's just like the that's like the worst having to like learn another playbook. It just takes a lot of time. I mean, there's a lot of like, like when I retired, like it was like my brain 
there was so much like space to just <laughs> fill in with you know stuff that actually mattered which was kind of nice like to just forget all that crazy stuff that I had to learn throughout the years um but you know I think and then each, each obviously, OC had a different, you know, idea and whether there was something that you liked with, you know, one versus the other. Um, you know, maybe one had a better idea on third down packages or a red zone package or maybe one liked to do more fancy plays, <clears throat> you know. So there's just so many different things um, that you kind of you, you got to see when you played and experience each OC. So. But I think the biggest thing is just change. I mean, it's obviously it can be beneficial, but it also just sucks going through. Um, and I think, you know, the one positive was having, you know, a couple of different receiver coaches. I was able to take, you know, one thing from, you know, one coach, one thing from the next and kind of build them all together, the things that you really liked uh, from each one. And that could kind of, you know, make you a complete player. Um, so I think that was the one pro to it is I got some, um, you know, different coaching styles on the more of the receiver side that helped. But it's it's no fun going through different OCs. Um, it's just it's just a lot. Do you, do you think that transition helped you in the NFL? Yeah, I think so. I mean, being able to learn a playbook, I think taking you know plays from each um, you know OC like different styles, you can um, you know help relate it. And then obviously, like when I played for the Packers and went to the Lions, was able to you know learn playbooks so much quicker because you kind of have been through it. But you get to the NFL, it's just that much you know more. So it's it's not easy by any means, but you know, that was one of the reasons I'm like, I'm, I'm ready to be done. I'm not going to another team trying to learn a whole other playbook, you know, but there's way more than that. It's just, you know, moving, moving the family. It's, you know, getting to know a, a whole bunch of new guys and trying to, you know, find your, your spot on the team and, you know, where you kind of melt. There's just, there's a lot that goes into that, but, but yeah, it definitely did help me out. I think. So you mentioned studying yourself. And I know nothing about the wide receiver position, really. What what do you think is unique about your game that kind of separated you from from others, and that made you excel? Yeah, I, I would say my attention to detail. Um, number one, understanding like the offense, understanding the defense. Um, but I think even in, like the route running is probably my best. Because the attention to detail there of getting in and out of routes, not taking extra steps, not rounding giving the quarterback indicators on when you're breaking, that helps the ball get out on time. Um, not running sloppy, you know, at the top of it. There's just so many things there where I was really be, you know, able to perfect that. And I think probably that some of that helped not being a receiver in high school because I didn't have any bad habits to break. But, um, you know, so maybe that was a benefit. Um, you know, obviously it was, a, it was a big learning curve, but I didn't have to, you know, unlearn some of my bad habits that I might have had if I was a receiver. So, um, but yeah, definitely. I think getting in and out of breaks was was huge for me. Um, you know, I was pretty pretty good at the top of routes. Um, pretty good knowledge of the corner position and kind of the game within the game, trying to set him up. You know, where I want him to be, and whether that's on a run play or during the pass. Like, there's so many different things inside of the game that you can win and help you know better yourself just by understanding a couple little nuances of the, of, the, of the play. So, um, I would say yeah, probably recognition of defense offense, what the quarterback wants, but then really the route running um, in the entirety. Um, you know, if I had releases like Devontae, like he's, you know, if you want to watch releases, him or Keenan Allen are the two guys you probably want to look at. Um, obviously, like that's a game that I was trying to get better at, but that just wasn't, you know, my game, the quick shiftiness in that sense. It was more when I was running the route, I could kind of create my separation. Um, which defense do you find it toughest to get a release off of while you were at UW? Um, like like at Wisconsin? Either one, at Wisconsin or like in the Big Ten. Um, so it's, it's kind of like different guys have different problems. So like I hated the longer, taller – well, not even taller, but just the longer, like lankier guys that strong and grabbed, you know, because it was like – just getting them off. But if you were a bigger receiver, you didn't mind those guys because you would just kind of throw them out the way. Um, you know, sometimes those little guys were tough for the bigger ones because they were they couldn't, you know, get that get away from them. Um, so for me, it was always I hated playing like the longer, taller, grabby type guys that just is like, get off of me. Um, you know, I don't I mean, Michigan State always had a couple of good ones that we that we'd go against. Um I think that Darquez Denard was one. He was pretty good. Um, 
I'm trying to, th- I mean, really there, honestly, there really wasn't like a matchup where I was like, Hey, I mean, I felt, cause I feel like that's the hardest position to play a DB. I mean, even if you play the best rep and you're there, you can still lose the rep, you know, cause you, the quarterback throws the ball and the receiver makes a good play. Like, Hey, you had the best rep you've ever had and you still lose. Like that's a hard position. So it's like, it wasn't really like, Oh, like I got to go get, cause even if I'm guarded, like as long as, I catch the ball, it don't matter, you know. So I never really – I got a hard position. I never want to play that position. But um, I never really had, you know, like, a, oh, I can't beat this guy or this or that. It was just more the match of what am I going to have to do against a certain type of player. So you had some wide open catches, I would say, to your route, uh, the ability to run routes. But you also had some magical catches. Do you have any ones that's like your, your favorite – um, probably it'd have to go to Ohio State um, against Bradley Roby. Um, had a really good um, game my senior year. I think it had like 200 some yards and a touchdown on him with like 10 catches, and he had like three pass interferences as well on top of that. Um, so I kind of tore him up a little bit. But, that, that's uh, being you're being very modest, Jared. <laughs> you absolutely owned Bradley Roby, and it was funny because he was what he went on to be a first round pick, I think, right? Yeah, he was a first rounder. Yeah, yeah, and you took his lunch money so many times; it was yeah. always fun to watch. And, that, and this started. I mean, the game started off tough. I think it had like not two drops, but it was you know, two con- contested catches. I think right away where it didn't come down with them, but then got kind of got on a roll. Um, but there was one against him where I had an out and up. Um, and I, I mean, it would have been a touchdown easy, but it was underthrown and I had to come. I mean, I, I had him beat by five, five, six, seven yards, um, but I had to come back. And it, that, that should have been P.I. too. I mean, he took my legs out before the ball got there, but I was still able to hang on to it. So there's a really cool picture online of that one. That was probably one of the more memorable catches. Um, second one would probably be first year we had invited big, uh, Nebraska to the Big Ten. It was at Wisconsin. Um, that was my uh, – with Russell was there. Uh, but I had to dive and catch into the end zone there. It was a pretty cool catch. Um, and I think that put us up, and we didn't really look back from that game on. Um, so those are probably, like, two of the more memorable ones. Those are great. Those are great. Um, so I want to jump forward a little bit here now to – because uh, you're back living in the state of Wisconsin, right? Yep. Okay, so yep. – and you're keeping up with Badger football. So we know that Coach Fick has come in. It's a It's a very new era. Have, what are your yeah. sort of just overall impressions so far? And what's been, have you been able to interact with the new staff at all? Um, and any of the new coaches? Um, haven't been able to interact with the new staff yet. Um, you know, I think they, they're doing a good job of um, just kind of prepping for the season. I'm sure there'll be some times where we can do that, maybe get to a practice. I know they invited, invited us back for like the uh, spring day. I wasn't able to make it though. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I think, to have a, a fresh outside perspective and just some new ideas and, you know, spruce things up. Like I said, it was – Coach Chris was one of my favorite coaches, so it's sad to see him go, um, you know, especially with the career that he had. I mean, played there, obviously had some success coaching, took a head coach position, came back for Wisconsin, had a lot of success. And and whether, you know, hey, right or wrong, if, you know, if it was his time to go, I wish they would have went about it a different way. But, hey, I'm not, I'm not the one making those decisions, so I don't really know what, you know – went on in that whole situation. But, um, you know, I think we got the right guy. I'm excited to see what Fick does. Um, you know, did a, did a really good job at, at Cincy. Um, you know, brought a lot of excitement. I think that's the cool thing. I mean, a lot of excitement not only for the state, but outside, you know, hey, I'm sure other other schools are, are taking notice of, of what Wisconsin's doing. And so super excited to see kind of what goes on this year, um, you know, with a new – uh, type of offense, you know, I think we'll still pound the rock a little bit, but being able to spread it out and, and allow for, hey, there's not eight guys in the box. You should have success that way. And if we can throw the rock too, um, it would be pretty fun to kind of see what happens there. So really excited um, with everything they got going. Yeah, if you're, if, you're a, if you're a wide receiver coming out of high school now, this place is a fun place to come play. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thought. You know, I mean, we'll see. Like, who knows? Maybe maybe we don't throw, but that's the expectation of hey, you know we're gonna run the rock and and also throw it too. And when you got a line like Wisconsin does, and you got running backs like we got, there should be a lot of opportunities, especially when you spread it out like that, like one on one. Man, you should eat all day, which would be pretty fun. 
So, I mean, obviously, you know, go back to you, John, you played with Nick Toon. We've talked about Lee Evans. Were there any other Badger receivers who uh, sort of took you under your wing? Uh, or even if they were past your time or before your time, I should say, that you, you know, really struck up a strong relationship with? Um, no, I would say, like, me and Nick were really close when I was a young guy. Um, obviously, we had Kyle Jefferson there as well. Um, Isaac Anderson, David Gilreath. Um, still talk to Gilreath, you know, once in a while because he does some stuff for the Badgers, which is pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, I mean, and obviously younger guys, I'm always trying to be there. So for Tim, you know, I, I talk to him every once in a while. He's he's there right now. Um, Alex Erickson was a guy that came behind me. Um, you know, it's kind of cool to watch him uh, and, and watch his career develop. Um, so you always try to be there if, if, hey, there's, you know, if there's a way I can be helpful or, you know, use me as a resource. Um, but I would say for the older guys, it was more like the seniors or the juniors that I kind of, you know, lent on to, to grow in. So Jared, you're an, in, you're an in-state guy, you're a Wisconsin guy. You're in the, I just find it so cool that, you know, you played for the Packers, but what's it like to literally be sitting in your living room and to hear your name called draft day, go to the Packers? Like, does that have, what is that? I, that to me must've been like one of the best days of your life. Yeah, it was, it was, so we were, um, so I married, still married to Rachel, my wife. Um, but we had her family and my family all together. Cause we figured, Hey, we'll be in another state. Won't see anybody. So we rented a place on a lake, a big, you know, huge cabin. And, um, when I got drafted, uh, my dad was actually all fishing cause it was, you know, the second day and it, or the yeah, no, third day or whatever it was. Um, third day and you know it just gets long you're like i'm like hey i'm texting jeff janice because me and him trained together we were roommates at the uh, senior bowl together and we're texting back and forth i'm like dude like what are we gonna do for a job like i gotta <laughs> figure out what i'm doing um so it just gets long and you know you kind of stop watching i turn off the tv you know turn off the at least sound me and my wife are just playing a game called cribbage a great game if you've never played it um i grew up on cribbage got the call from green bay I saw a Green Bay number. I, thought, I was like, well, obviously it's Green Bay. It could be like one of my buddies or something. Like, I don't know. Um, and then pick up and get, you know, it's obviously them. Hey, you got drafted by the Packers. Pretty cool. Um, but for me, it was like, I knew like, cause we had to be there the next day, you know? So it's like, it was, and I, as a fifth round guy, it's not like you're expected to, you know, make the roster really. Um, so I just knew it was more like, Hey, I got to get to work rather than like enjoy it. You know? So honestly, I really don't, don't think I got to enjoy it until probably the off season, you know, um, or even when I was done playing. Um, but it was more like, yeah, hey, it's time to grind. Let's go earn a, earn a spot. I, I just I just think that must be so cool to put on, the, you know, the, the the gold helmet with the G and just yeah. be a part of, like, a team that you grew up – I mean, what's it? It's a lot of history. A lot of history. I mean, it would be like if I was a Jet, I guess. Well, except the Jets don't have history. They don't have – not a good history. Uh, <laughs> history, just maybe not much. Uh, they got history. They won one Super Bowl before anybody was born on this earth, pretty much. And uh, we might never go back. Hey, but what do you think about the Jets getting Aaron Rodgers, though? Hey, that's pretty exciting. I'm excited for Aaron. I mean, um, obviously, it'd be nice to be able to play for one team for your whole career, but honestly, to be able to experience another, um, another team, another organization, see how you know they do things differently. It helps you appreciate number one, what you had, or maybe it's like, Hey, I like this a little bit better. But when I was able to go to Detroit, um, it was cool to kind of see how the organizations ran things differently. So, um, and it just kind of gets you like, Hey, like for me to go in there, you know, it was kind of like, well, kind of backtrack. So fifth rounder, it was, you know, at green Bay, it's like, I feel like the fans and, and this wasn't like any issues or anything, but I felt like the fans like treated me as like a first rounder where it's like, like we'd be in press conferences and, you know, I'd hear him ask questions to the coaches, like, why isn't Jared starting or this? And it's like, well, you got, you know, Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb, Devontae Adams, the second rounder, even if I was better than them, which I wasn't, I'm not, not like I'm going to play over. I'm like, you're paying this guy 10 million, this guy 10 million, this guy's a, first, a second rounder. So it's like, you know, a fifth round anywhere else, like you're just expected to be cut. But since I had the, you know, they saw what I did in Wisconsin, like, and not saying I couldn't have done that. It's just like, you know, coming in, like, as you're not really expected to play. But in my situation, it was like, you know, hey, why isn't this guy starting? And I hate, I honestly, I didn't like the way that, I, not on myself, like, I didn't mind it, but um, I could handle the pressure. But I just didn't like, like, having that weird, like, 
relationship, like on the coaches of like, why do they keep talking about this chair? You know what I mean? Like stop asking questions. I'm just like, don't put me in that situation where it's like, they don't, they, they're like despising me because they got to answer all these dumb questions. <laughs> but do you find oh. that that's, but that's so unique to Wisconsin and like the love they have for football and the, right. their football play. Like you really feel like you're the state's baby. Right. Right. And that's what was cool. Um, but I just felt like it was kind of weird. You know, it's just a weird <laughs> – like a fifth round or anywhere else expected to be cut. Sure. But can I say that, then I'll go back to Detroit. Like I kind of felt like the underdog again, which my whole career I was always an underdog, like earn a walk, a walk on this and that. So to be able to experience that was kind of fun, like just to be a nobody, go fly under the radar and, um, you know, be able to earn the spot there that, that year was pretty fun. Obviously, Aaron's in a much different spot, but still to be able to like, you know, hey, everything's new. It kind of brings the new excitement of, hey, you got to learn this and this and that. Um, and to be able to get to know the guys and, and, and see what you can do with that team. Like, I'm really excited to see how he does, how that team does. Um, but then just for him to, you know, just experience something. Because I'm sure, you know, when he's done playing, like, he'll have a lot of appreciation, which he already does. But, you know, it'll just kind of further his appreciation for, you know, the Packers organization. Well, I know Bernie's excited about that as well. So, um uh, we will get out, get you out of here here in a minute uh, as our hour is running out. But what are you doing nowadays now that the uh, now that the NFL is behind? So I'm a financial advisor um, with Thriving, so they're a firm. I'm actually on Appleton, Wisconsin, and Minneapolis. They got two headquarters, but um, all over the the country. Um, so, but I got my office back here in a little town called Montello. So just south of where I grew up, um, got some hunting land over this way, and. Um, it's only like 45 minutes to Madison, so it's kind of nice. I mean, I can really get anywhere um, I want in the state within like two hours. So it's kind of nice in that sense where um centrally located there. So um, but I've been doing that for five plus years now, which is kind of crazy. Time goes so quick. Um, but doing that, um, you know, doing outdoors type stuff, doing some golf outings here or there, just trying to, you know, stay relevant, I guess, and um, help out any. Um, organization I can in that sense and then um, got four little kids with my wife so pretty busy with uh, with them too so yeah the whole fatherhood thing takes up a little bit of time doesn't it just a little bit right I don't just have I'm, Matt Perkins I'm telling you this is one of the most beloved human beings in Wisconsin I guess I, I I'm well aware I've spent a lot of time in Wisconsin he is what you he sound he's he's very 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 humble but he walks into a room and every person knows him even when he walked in, I was like, man, look at that guy. He's a stud. You're an idiot. <laughs> uh, but every time I've gotten to hang out with you, it's been fun. Dude, Jared, where do you get your competitive nature from? Because this guy literally wants to beat everyone in darts, pool. Cribbage. And he, and he does it. He's like beating little kids. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Dude, I don't know. I just love competing. I think – I think that's growing up as the youngest kid, right? Um, you know, you're always trying to grow up and beat your sisters and um, in whatever sport you're, they're doing or a game or this or that. And um, I think part of that comes down to the wrestling too. Like it's just, you know, you just had that in wrestling, you got to like dominate the other guy next to you. Like that's all it comes down to is like you got to break his will and and take over. So it's like you kind of take that from probably from some of that and um, convert it into some of the other things in life. I, I know how you, you you have made Brady a fullback with some of your trash talk to make him run through walls because I I've never laughed so hard watching him one play darts, but two watching you trash talk at right. the same time. It's always fun. I think I probably get the trash talk from the DBs that I always go against. <laughs> Who was yeah, the best trash really. talker that you played against? I mean, it always came down to Michigan State or Ohio State. I mean, that was you know, I don't really know the guys, but they'd always be yapping. And it's just like, just shut up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know I any of their names either. I just know their I really numbers. I never talk back, but I would just, just let my game, you know, and I you know, just kind of go along with it. But um, yeah, it was those, those two teams always just were yapping pre-game this and that, you know, it's just like, dude, you're not even playing. Like, sit down. And <laughs> so, I mean, it'd be like the little, like eight, you know, backups over there just trying to look cool. <laughs> well, Jared, thanks for coming on, man. It is much appreciated. I'm telling you, 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 this is one of the funniest human beings you could be in a room with. Well, yeah, I always enjoy my, my time. So when you uh, asked me to do it, it was a no-brainer. So it's always fun getting together with you. 
Well, well thank they- you, Jared, so much. And thank you to everyone who is tuning in uh, on the Believe Podcast Network. And uh, until next time, on Wisconsin. On Wisconsin. Game day, baby.